All right, Joe Biden, um, the impeachment inquiry is, uh, is coming, is coming. And you know what? Some key Democrats, maybe they smell blood in the water. There's a guy named David Ignatius. He's a big time columnist in Washington, D.C. And he came out today and said President Biden should not run again in 2024. I don't think Biden and Vice President Harris should run for re-election. And he cites <laughs> some key reasons. Hunter and Burisma, Hunter in China and all those shenanigans, and Joe Biden phoning Hunter during dinner with foreign oligarchs. David Ignatius, prominent liberal columnist, weighing in. And I wonder what James Comer, the congressman, the chair of the House Oversight Committee, you know, uh, welcome back, Congressman. How are you, first of all? I'm well. What did you make of that? Is that a big deal? Because let's face it, we've had a hard time. You've had a hard time kind of breaking the Democrats, getting their attention, the Democrat media. That seems like it's pretty significant. That's a big deal. I mean, you look at the CNN poll uh, a week and a half ago that said 63 percent of Americans believe that Joe Biden was involved in his family schemes. So what's happened is Americans are getting their news from alternative sources, uh, even though the mainstream media including the Washington Post, hasn't given this investigation justice. Now I think they realize that the American people are curious and the American people have using have been uh, investigating this. And they realize it's not normal for a vice president's family to receive millions and millions of dollars from foreign nationals. And for the vice president, now our current president, to not be able to identify one single thing that the family members did to receive the money. That's simple for most Americans to realize. Now the media realizes that Joe Biden's polls are in the toilet. And then I think the straw that broke the camel's back was Ian Sams, who's the White House spokesperson. He's their lap dog that goes out and attacks me and Jim Jordan all the time. He got on the press yesterday in a panic after this uh, impeachment inquiry was announced and said the press wasn't doing a good enough job defending Joe Biden. Look, that's all the press has done is defend Joe Biden. And I think that was like Barney Fife waving an empty gun at Otis, the town drunk in Mayberry. I think that was the moment the Washington Post said enough. OK, Joe Biden can't answer for how his family got millions of dollars. Uh, this is obviously not going to go away. Let's just go ahead and cut bait now and run and try to find an alternative next year in the presidential election. Yeah, that young man is in way over his head. Although he did say, look, uh, oh, James Comer, he's bragging about Joe Biden going down in the polls. Now, we did just talk about that, but I actually think that's OK. I mean, you're uncovering the truth about Joe Biden. The people need to know it. And quite frankly, if this softens him up for reelection, somebody like this should not be reelected. So there's value here in driving those poll numbers lower. I'm basically trying to defend against that talking point. Uh, how do you see it? Well, look, we're not talking about Joe Biden's a bad person. We're not talking about Joe Biden's policies have been disastrous. He's created massive inflation. We're talking about Joe Biden took money from our enemies. And you look at all the investigations of presidents in the, in the past, you look at the impeachments of various presidents, nothing has ever been about a president taking bribes, a president's family on the take, a president's family violating the laws and this president's administration at every turn and every agency covering it up. I think this is one of the most serious political scandals in my lifetime. I can't think of anything worse from a politician at this high of a level. And I think the American people have seen this. And I think that the, the Biden administration and the Biden spokespeople, they have had ample time to try to explain where the money came from and why Joe Biden wasn't truthful about all the times he said he never met with or spoke to any of these crooks in these adversarial countries yeah. who have been sending his family millions and millions of dollars. And I think when the American people see the the Joe Biden was using pseudonyms for over 5,000 emails that he was secretly communicating with his son about policies affecting uh, the son's financial ability. I think they realized that uh, everything Joe Biden said about his knowledge and involvement 
of his family shady business dealings has been a lie. And I think the American people are fed up with it. I think the Washington Post realizes that. I think CBS News realizes that. And honestly, I think CNN realizes that. I got to get you on a couple of things. Number one, the text messages. We've had them now for a while, especially the WhatsApp message. I am sitting here with my father. Have you been able to determine, um, you know, by your geolocation, you know, GPS? I mean, was Joe Biden in that house with Hunter on July 30th of 2017? Uh, that seems like it would be significant. They've done nothing to debunk this. In fact, the lawyers, Hunter's lawyers, actually seem to confirm its authenticity. Was, Hunt, was Joe Biden there with Hunter, as he says? My gut tells me no, or he would have put him on the phone, because he put him on the phone over a dozen times with these people. So there's a precedent for Hunter Biden putting his father on the phone. Now, his father may have been with him, and we're trying to find that. Uh, that's one thing that the impeachment inquiry will give us the ability to do, to be able to access more information, more evidence, cell phone records, cell phone bills, things of, of that sort. This impeachment inquiry gives us that ability to obtain those documents now to further our, our evidence. But uh, my gut says he wasn't there because uh, Devin Archer testified that he put his father on the phone at least, at least over a dozen times. That could have been 40 or 50 times. So, uh, yeah, I think if Hunter had had his dad on the phone, beside him, he would have put him on the phone. And Joe Biden always talked to these people, even though he's well, lied to the American people for years about it. You know what, though? In those calls, it was always platitudes and generalities, you know what I mean? And this time they're fired up, believe. you know, <laughs> and it was a signal that he was there. I'm not saying that those calls weren't... Um, uh, uh, inculpatory. So let me ask you this finally, um, sir. The impeachment inquiry, does that stop the oversight uh, committee work? Does it fuse? To, what happens? Now we're going to continue. It gives us a tool uh, as we uh, undoubtedly head to court uh, to be able to require the judge to rule faster. It gives us the ability to obtain more documents. Uh, this is something that, as you know, throughout this investigation, uh, we've been obstructed by the Treasury Department. We've been obstructed by Secret Service, by the IRS, and certainly by the Department of Justice and by National Archives. This now gives us the tool for these agencies not to be able to obstruct. Once we request this information, they have to turn it over now because we are in impeachment inquiry. So this was a huge asset to our investigation. We proved to the uh, uh, American people that uh, there have been many crimes committed by the president's right. family, and the president has been truthful. He has not been truthful with the American people about his knowledge and involvement with the family. Now we want to go further and continue to follow the money, and that's going to require looking at the Biden's personal bank accounts, and that's where we're headed now. Thank you very much, sir. Very, very much. To be continued, Congressman James Comer.